Well, let's get started on the first one. Again, our idea is we're going to try to translate this like we did last time into an equation, and then we get to solve it. And, and the, the plan was we're going to underline all the words that mean math, and we're going to start with the word that means equals. On our first sentence, what word means equals up here? Yes. Good. What we learned last time is that everything before the is goes on the left. Everything after the is goes on the right. So on our problem up here, we're going to look at the before. That breaks our problem up into just two expressions, and that's kind of nice to deal with. So our first expression is 6 more than twice a number. Give me some things that mean math in that expression. More than. Okay, more than. What's more than mean? Plus. Does it mean 6 plus or plus 6? The more than. The than. Does that go before or after? Before. It goes after. So the more than... What this means is that you're going to have something, and you're taking 6 more than that. So it will be plus 6 at the very end. That more than and the less than work that way. You've got to have that down right, especially for the less than. The more than is not so crucial, but the less than is very important. More than, okay, what's, what's, what else up here? How what do you do with the number? Six? Less than. Um, less than would be minus 6 at the very end. Some. Some, good, we have some. I'm talking about the first expression, though. Why you know? Well, what's twice mean? Times ten. Good. So two times, twice, two times. And a number. What's a number x? Variable. Variable. Okay, going old school with the x. Got it. Six more than twice a number is. So let's work on that part just right now. Six more than twice a number. Six more than, that was the not six plus, it was plus six. So here's what this says to me. It says six more than says plus six at the very end. What am I taking six plus? I'm sorry, what am I taking uh, 6 more than? More than 2x. 2x. Two 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 so this equation should be 2x plus 6 on the left-hand side. Do you have 2x plus 6? Yes. Look, if you put 6 plus 2x, it will work out just fine on this particular problem. However, if I had given you 6 less than, you have to have that in a certain order because subtraction, unlike addition, it's not commutative. You can't switch those things around. Addition, it doesn't make any difference. I'd like you to write in the proper order. That way you get used to this idea. That's, that's the whole, I, whole thing here. Now, the second expression is the sum of the number and 9. Give me some words that mean math. I think you already said. Sum. Sum means? Uh, of the number. we got to use x there. And 9. So the sum of the number and 9, we're going to write, which comes first, x or 9? X. X plus 9. Would you raise your hand if you got that far? Good for you. Can you solve that? How would you solve that? Good. What is the lower variable here? 2x. So I'll subtract my x. I've got x plus 6 equals 9. Last step, we're going to get rid of the constant term. We subtract 6 from both sides. x equals 3, and we are done. Do you always have to subtract the variable first, or can you subtract 6 first? It's appropriate to subtract this, or get rid of the smaller variable first. That way you understand where your variable is going to be located at the end. Because other times, if you got rid of the wrong number, then you're going to start moving stuff around even more. And that's kind of annoying. That leads to extra steps. We don't want to do that. Okay, let's continue. We have the sum of 5 times a number and 4 yields 6 less than 3 times a number. What is the word up here that means equals? Yields. 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 Yeah, that was one that we don't see very often, but I want to make sure you saw that. So we have our equals. Whatever comes before that equals, before the yields, is going on the left-hand side. After the yields, go on the right-hand side. Let's look at the before. The sum of 5 times a number and 4. Tell me some words that mean math in that expression. Sum. Sum, of course, means both. Plus. And what else means math? Time. Yeah, time's kind of nice. Times means times. A number? Variable. Variable. How about? B. B. All right. We can do B. Let's work on that first part. The sum of 5 times a number and 4. The sum of 5 times the number and 4, it's written in the appropriate order for us. Sum of 5 times the number 4 means 5 times the number is going to go first, and 4 is going to come second. What comes first on the left-hand side? 5, five, five B plus 4. Five, B plus 4. Perfect. 5 times the number plus 4, or the sum of 5 times the number. You got the left side down correctly. Let's look at the right-hand side. 
Right hand side says six less than three times the number. Y'all tell me what words up here mean some math. Less than three times. Three times. Three times. The number B, but less than. What does less than mean? Does it mean six minus or minus six? That's going to be at the end. Yeah, the less than says whatever you have, you're taking six less than that. So after everything is all said and done, that's when we subtract six. Not just have you're still with me on this part. Okay, so here we're going to have something, something. Minus six, what's the something something? Six less than what? Three B. Okay, that's our three times the number. And can you solve that? Sure. To solve this, we're going to get rid of the smaller variable. In that case, that's our three B. So we'll subtract three B from both sides. We'll get two B plus 4 equals negative 6. And the next step is to do what? Subtract 4. Good. So 2b equals, how much is that going to equal? Negative 10. Perfect. Use an addition rule there. And last step is always to divide if we have a coefficient. So last thing we're doing here is divided by 2. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this translation stuff? You can expect something like these two problems on your test. You will have something like that. Now let's see if we can apply this to like a real life word problem. You guys ever been to like a concert or a sporting event? Yeah. yeah. You ever bought tickets online? Yeah. Usually they'll charge you something called a convenience fee. You ever charge a convenience fee before? Yeah, it's not that convenient. It's not convenient. <laughs> it's not that convenient. Yeah. Usually they will charge you a convenience fee. Now this company does something different. What they say is, I don't care how many, and usually it's by the ticket is how they, they typically do it. So here's three dollars per ticket that you got to pay me. That's cheap. Yeah, that's, that'd be really cheap. Here's what this company does. They say, I don't care how many tickets you buy. What we're going to do is charge you a flat fee of nine dollars and fifty cents. A flat, what's a flat fee mean? It's always the same. One for all, right. all Good. the whole. So no matter how many tickets I buy, all I'm getting charged for is $9.50 plus the price of the ticket. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So the flat fee means it doesn't really change. That's how this company works. So if you buy one ticket, you pay $9.50 extra. Buy two tickets, you pay $9.50 extra. You buy 100 tickets, you pay $9.50 extra. That's how this company, it, it does their business. So let's write this out and see if we can determine part of this problem. You see, you went a long time ago and you bought your tickets. But you actually don't remember how many tickets you bought. So you're going to go invite some people, but you don't remember how many tickets you, you purchased. All you have down on your receipt is, I spent a total amount of money. Let's see if we can work backwards and figure out how many tickets you originally purchased. That's the premise to this question. So a ticket agency charges a flat fee of $9.50. charges a flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents plus fifty seven fifty per ticket. Your bill was five hundred twenty seven dollars. know is how many tickets did you buy? Say you forgot. We don't know. How many tickets did you buy?
we're going to do this the same way we set up these word problems. We're going to read through, read through, and we're going to read through, read through, and try to find <laughs> this. Stuff. We're going to read through and try to find these words that mean mathematics. So, let's look at that. Ticket HG charges a flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents. You all okay with the word flat fee? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't change. Flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents plus fifty seven fifty per ticket. Your bill was five hundred twenty seven dollars. How many tickets were purchased? The first thing I want you to do, just like we did over here, go through and underline the word that means equals. What word up here means equals? Was. That's the past tense of is. Is and was mean the same thing. So the word that means equals is was. You all right with that? Yeah, I guess. Guess so, Jeff. Guess so. So we have an equal sign. Here's what's nice about these word problems. Everything before that is goes on the left-hand side of our equals. Everything after the is goes on the right. Let's look at the thing after. So blah, 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 blah. Your bill was $527. What's going on the right-hand side of my equation? So that's it. That's nice. <laughs> on the left-hand side comes everything before. Ticket agency charges a flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents plus fifty-seven fifty per ticket. Tell me some words up here that mean mathematics, please. Well, that's kind of nice. We know plus means plus. That's easy. But there's another one up there that's not so obvious. What now? Ticket charges. Would it be the flat fee part? That that's an important part of it. That means it's not going to change. Well, there's another word up there. No one said yet. Say that again. Per ticket. Per ticket. That word per means multiplication. So if we're, if we're talking about per, or it means per each, per each ticket. So that word per is kind of important for us. What that means is that however many tickets I have, I multiply that by 5750 and that's my cost for those tickets. Are you with me? So that, that per suggests for, for each ticket or multiplication part. So let's try to write this out. A flat fee of 950, flat fee means it doesn't change. That's a constant. Constants don't change. So I have the 950. Tell me what else I need to write. Plus, because plus, it said plus, and then what? Okay, 57. Why T? Why are we using a variable here? Oh, okay, so we don't actually know how many, so we do have to use a variable. Let's see if this makes sense with our, our equation here. This says $9.50 flat fee. Hey, there's flat fee. <coughs> plus, plus. $57.50 per ticket. That means for each ticket, you are going to charge $57.50. $57.50T. That's for each ticket, you're going to charge $57.50. Is or was equals $5.27. Do you guys feel all right with getting this word problem? Hey, can you solve that? Yeah. Sure. Of course you can. Now, we haven't really dealt with decimals, but this is a good introduction for us. What's your variable? T. We're trying to get everything away from the T. What's the first thing we need to do? Subtract the 950 from both sides. Good. That is our constant term. So if we subtract 950. We get 5750T equals, you can use your calculator if you'd like. If you have a calculator out, go ahead and use that. How much is 527 minus 950, 9.50? Okay. Say that again. 517.5. Perfect. Now on your calculator, what's the next thing you'd have to do to solve this problem? Divide 5750. Okay, so our coefficient in